What's up, doll collectors, hobbyists, fabs, and besties? I'm Toya, an adult doll collector. Welcome to my miniverse. It's a beautiful day in the dolly world, and I'm feeling the need to check out some doll fashion. Let's take a trip to Target. My Target has a Disney section. Let's go over to the Illy Forever dolls and see what they have. Here are the Shop Disney dolls with the inset eyes. And new dolls from Jack's Pacific. Priced at $29.99, here is the I Love Minnie Mouse doll. She's all pink and polka dots. Here's the I Love Rapunzel doll with purples and florals. And here is the I Love Cruella doll. Wearing black, white, and red. That coat looks fabulous. Let's get these dolls out of the box for a closer look. Honestly though, I do find the packaging a little challenging. Just saying. But once freed from the box, the fit is cute. The I Love Mini doll has light brown golden hair. It's kind of like a dark blonde. The front is pulled up and secured with an elastic. She has a little box hair with a slight curl to it. She has blue painted eyes. There's a little glitter on her eyelid. She has a pink lip color. Wears long pink heart earrings that are removable. Thank you. To me, the hair feels pretty soft. She's not pixelated. Can move at the head, the shoulder, the elbow, wrist, hip. She's got good rotation out to the side. Bend at the knee. There is a single joint here and move at the ankle. The Jack Pacific dolls can sit with their legs forward. With some of the Shop Disney dolls, when they sit, their legs go out to the side. So I like this, but we are giving up the double knee articulation. But the Jack Pacific dolls give us more fashion and I'm here for it. The I Love Minnie Mouse doll comes wearing a pink fluffy jacket. It's soft and fuzzy, has a collar, and is finished all the way around. She wears a graphic mini t-shirt. It has a little collar and it looks like it's cut at the top, but it is stitched around that edge. Love the details. Paired with a white and pink ruffle skirt. I like the fabric. The skirt and the top are two separate pieces and they Velcro in the back. Then she has sandals with white and pink bows. We also get a blue heart purse that has a slit in the top, but it's pretty stiff, so I don't know if you really wanna try to put anything in there. And there's a pair of white sunglasses. Her second look has pink heart sunglasses, a necklace, a turquoise polka dot top with puff sleeves and a tie in the front, paired with a Minnie Mouse purse, pink cargo pants with faux pockets, flowers, and bows, and a pair of turquoise sneakers. Her look is bright and colorful, and I just gotta know, can her clothes fit other dolls? Oh yeah, and she comes with a glitter ring. But it's time for Does the Fit Fit? Where we try doll clothes on Barbie. The mini graphic tee looks great on a curvy Barbie. However, I could not get the skirt on. The fuzzy jacket is an adorable yes. The turquoise top is a yes. The pants were a challenge to get on, but doable. However, I could not close them in the back. The sandals are a little large for a curvy, but you can probably get away with the tennis shoes. On a classic made to move Barbie body, the t-shirt and skirt totally work. Same with the fuzzy jacket, which I think is going to be a winner with a lot of dolls. This outfit totally fits a classic Barbie. And I think we can get away with these shoes as well, but they would fit better with a pair of socks. I really love this outfit. I do wish the pants had working pockets, but you know. Here's the shirt and skirt on a petite. It fits. The jacket works. We can do the turquoise top, but the pants are a little long. The skirt and shirt are a little loose on a Poppy Parker doll, but doable. I will gladly take this pink fuzzy jacket in several different colors, but it does shed. And the last outfit is a little loose on a Poppy Parker doll, but I think you can get away with it if you want it to. Out of the box, the I Love Rapunzel doll did have a little bit of box hair, but it was pretty easy to just fluff it up. This doll has brown curly hair. The top is pulled up and it is pretty soft. 
She has freckles and painted edges, large brown eyes and a red lip color. She wears gold colored lantern earrings that are removable. She wears a purple ombre sweater with some nice little details. It's finished all the way around and the bottom of the sleeves are gathered. She wears a pink striped top underneath with a silver colored ring at the neck. Do take care, the fabric can snag. She wears blue jeans that flare at the bottom. They are split on the sides and have lavender lacing, gold stitching, faux pockets, and a little printed Rapunzel detail. She has yellow sunglasses with pinkish purple lenses, a little woven bag, and slides with gold painted details. The second look is a lavender top with a faint print, ribbon straps, and puff sleeves, a yellow skirt with a floral print and a tie at the waist, the pattern goes all the way around and both items Velcro in the back. I paired it with the included pink and gold necklace, Pascal purse with a charm on the side and the purse does open. And she has a pair of pink and black boots. And there's a glitter ring. I can't get the jeans on my curvy Barbie. However, the pink and white striped top is super cute. I was able to get the skirt on, but I can't close it in the back. The purple ombre sweater is a yes. Ooh, and the lavender top is super cute too. And you know what? If you're not looking at the sleeves, honestly, this looks pretty easy to make. And it looks great on a classic Barbie. The skirt fits as well. And it's cute with the jeans, which also fit a classic Barbie. The pink and white top looks great. And the sweater too. This outfit's a little large on a petite, but you can make it work. This sweater is proving to be another great piece to add to our wardrobe. This purple top seems to be a little loose on a petite, but the skirt is a good fit. Here's the outfit on Poppy Parker. It fits pretty good. It's a tiny bit loose. I'm getting similar results with the other look. And of course, she can fit the sweater. I wonder if we can take this top trace it onto fabric. We can draw a small seam allowance around the edge and mark where the straps go. We can cut on the outside line or place a rectangle of tulle behind it and sew with a needle and thread or a sewing machine on the traced line. I stitched all the way around and I'm gonna leave one side open, sewing a little past the traced line to give me a seam allowance. Trim off the excess, make small cuts at the corners, flip it inside out, and it's pretty much hemmed. Fold over and tuck in the extra, cut a 1 4th inch wide strip of Velcro, and sew it onto the good side of the end. So now that side is hemmed as well and has the Velcro. Take the other piece of Velcro and we're gonna sew it to the inside of the other end. Cut two and a quarter inch pieces of ribbon. I glued them on with a little fabric glue and I'm using pins to hold them in place. Allow it to dry, then stitch them in place. We can make our stitches cute and embroider little flowers. And now we can make more of those cute little tops to expand our wardrobe. It's an easy fit under the sweater and with the I Love Minnie Mouse pink fluffy coat. I used a cotton fabric with no stretch and it still fits a curvy. Examining your doll clothes and seeing how you can recreate them is a budget friendly way to have an ever growing closet. Speaking of an ever growing closet, the I Love Cruella doll is coming with some pretty nice pieces in my opinion. This is actually the first doll that I bought out of these three. I bought it on Amazon and it's just been sitting on the shelf waiting for the other girls to arrive because I had to get a closer look at this jacket. The doll comes with brown hair with blonde in the front. I was hoping that this would be white, but you know, that's just me. My doll has a little box hair, but there is a little bit of a curl. She has brown eyes, glitter eyeshadow, a pinkish brown lip color. Her ears are not pierced. She wears a long black and white coat with a little Cruella on the lapel. The edges of the lapels feel like they've been singed and then there's a black stitch near the edge. It has cuffs. The fabric has a nice texture. 
The print goes all the way around and you can see little Mickey Mouse ears. Underneath, there's a top similar to the one we just made, only it's fuzzy in the front. There's a stretch in the back and it velcros. We get black and white pants with stitched details and a faux button and red and gold shoes. She comes with sunglasses with red frames and there's a little emblem in the corners, a black, white, and red bag that says Cruella. The second look has a black and white top with a cutout and a ribbon that goes around the neck, a black and red faux leather skirt with gold button details. The buttons are little hearts. There is a black and white bag with a gold emblem and a red strap and white boots with a red line. And we get a gold colored necklace and a glitter ring. Personally, I could do without the glitter rings. I would love to see them replaced with something like a themed cell phone. Okay, here is the fuzzy top and skirt on a curvy Barbie. The top was an easy fit. The skirt is a little snug, but it closes in the back and everything. I wasn't able to get the pants on, but the coat works. And so does the black and white top. Here's the outfit on a classic Barbie. It's an easy fit. The fuzzy top and pants fit as well. The pants stop a little above the ankles and the coat is an easy fit. Here it is on a petite. The sleeves of the coat are a little long. It was easy to get on. There's a little room in the outfit and the pants go down to the ankles. Here's the second outfit. It's also kind of roomy. It's pretty loose on a Poppy Parker doll as well. The fuzzy top is a nice fit. However, I think the pants are a little loose but the coat seems to fit. I really like all the little details in the bags and I wonder if we can make our own little bags and maybe we can recycle some of the doll packaging. I cut a rectangle from the bottom, then cut it into smaller pieces. I have two that are one and three quarter inches by one and a quarter inch and one that is one and three quarters by one half. I use tacky glue to glue them onto a piece of fabric, leaving a small space between them. Then cut the edges, then fold over and glue down the sides to make a fabric book cover. Repeat, but make it a little smaller because it's going to fit inside of the purple one. I cut two more pieces of paperboard and cover both sides and cut it so one side has a fold and the other three have tabs. Take the smaller little book cover and we're gonna fold it so the fabric is on the inside. Then glue the paperboard with the little tabs onto the side and use the tabs to hold it in place. To make a box that is covered on the inside and the smaller sides, place ribbon through a jump ring and glue it down. Then glue the ribbon inside the box. Repeat for the other side and allow it to dry. While waiting, let's sketch a design on the cover, then go over it with paint or gel pens. I'm using gold gel pens to make a book cover. Take the box and glue it inside. Add a chain to the jump rings for an easy book purse that we can make to match our different outfits. And we can easily put stuff inside. And we can use fabrics with prints to make a cover. Add the ribbon with the jump rings to the spine Glue fabric on top, fold over the edges of a small rectangle of fabric, and I glued a ribbon across the top. Glue it inside to make a small pocket. Cover a rectangle of foam board with fabric. I glue it to the other side to take up some space. I add another small pocket. Add a chain to make another book purse for our Disney bounding dolls. And let's go over the first one with a little gold paint. I added a few layers and it created some nice dimension. Oh yeah, paint is definitely the way to go. And I'm just loving these little book purses. And it's always fun to recycle doll packaging to make more mini accessories. Thank you for joining us for another Does The Fit Fit and a little crafting. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at my Froggy Stuff, the Frog Vlog, and Bella of My Froggy Stuff. And we will see you next time. Bye!